What's going on, everybody? Keith Niebuhr with Gators Online, and I'm joined by Corey Bender of Gators Online, our senior recruiting writer extraordinaire. Uh, and we're going to talk a little Florida Gators football recruiting today. And this is a rapid reaction show because, Corey, you know, there's some breaking news. And, and it's been a heck of a, a strong run for Florida Gators recruiting since, you know, mid-June. Uh, but today, some, some news that uh, isn't that welcome over at Gators HQ, and that's uh, the decommitment of three-star defensive tackle Makai Burrow, uh, who I hope I'm all pronouncing his name right. Uh, you know, a guy that was only a three-star, Corey, but somebody that Florida, we think, had a, a pretty high value uh, placement on, they, a player they really wanted. They beat out Georgia to land. Yep. Uh, so it, 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 it was a significant pickup when they landed him, and it's significant that he's decommitted. But, Corey, you and I both have heard, let's jump right into it, we both heard Florida is not going to give up What's the latest on his recruitment? Yeah, like you said, like Florida's going to keep recruiting him. I think right now George is a school to kind of keep the most tabs on. You know, they barely it, it was a very close battle the first time around. Florida barely edged out Georgia, and you know since then, since this uh, decommitment, Georgia's kind of been trending up. You know, there's been some reports that there's a school kind of look out for now going forward. And yeah, I think with Florida too, they're still number three in the rankings. There's still some priority guys left on the board as well that we'll touch on later on the show. But overall, I think. With Burrow, he was a high upside guy, a guy that could really become a big time player once he gets in a strength and conditioning program. Really good film, but I think it's one of those decommitments that it, I don't think you lose sleep over it if you're a Florida fan. So, you know, plenty of targets still on the board, and we'll definitely evaluate those here soon. Yeah, a lot of buzz about Georgia. Obviously, that was the school Florida beat. Uh, we looked into this last week, Corey. You and I both were starting to get some vibes that, that you know, and it had nothing to do with Florida losing the first game to Utah, I want to point yeah. out. Sometimes, you know, there's always going to be guys that you have to recruit to through the whistle, we say, which is through signing day. Uh, he's one. And we pointed that out on our hot board last week. And and uh, I know you had communicated some with him. And I think you learned that he wasn't going to be at the Florida-Tennessee game or was wishy-washy about it. And and so there were some – you're reading tea leaves. And, and then we heard from Florida sources that, hey, they, they thought that they were going to have to recruit him all the way to the end. Yep. Uh, and then, lo and behold, he decommitted today, Monday. Um, you know, so not ideal. We, we do understand that, again, like we both said, Flo Florida is going to keep recruiting him, hope for the best. But obviously, Georgia is a school to keep an eye on. We understand that Oregon is involved, South Carolina, which is really prioritized O-line and D-line recruiting this cycle. Yeah. They're involved. Maybe FSU. I mean, he's a talented player. I guess the, the upside is that if he if he if the physicality uh, and, and the want to and the desire match the body because he's 6'5", 380 pounds. If, if you could match them together, get them on the same page, you could have something special. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's similar to like when Des Watson came out. Of yeah. Ottawa. Similar, same type of thing. Really good player, but just kind of has to spend a little bit more time in, in the weight room. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, but he's not quite there. And, and quite frankly, he's a guy that's not going to give you a ton of snaps uh, at this stage of the game. He's a two down guy. But with a, a good upside, we're not going to sit here and dog this kid. He's a, he's a good player, a good talent. I, I, I thought he was – I don't want to say criminally criminally underrated, but I thought he was a guy that probably – yeah, I personally liked him a little bit better than the industry did. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, so Florida's you – know, they can't quit. They're going to keep working on him, hope for the best, uh, hope that the, the reasons that he committed in the first place will lead him back down to Gainesville. We'll have to see mm -hmm. if they can get him on campus uh, this fall. There's so much smoke about Georgia right now. Uh, in the meantime, Corey, that now leaves Florida. And I got to pull this up. Let's pull up my hot board. That leaves Florida with one, two uh, defensive line commits. One of them is Nasir Johnson, the four star out of Dublin, Georgia. And Corey, when I just said there are certain guys you're going to have to probably recruit all the way through signing day, I think Nasir Johnson is one of them. Yeah. I don't think Florida State ever probably gave up. We've heard Georgia, uh, as of last week at least, was still interested in him. Uh, but that's a guy now that it becomes even more urgent, more pressing that you keep him. Uh, and the other guy we have classified as a defensive line commit, we don't know for sure that he's going to play defensive line, and that's Kendall Jackson, yeah. uh, you know, who's in that uh, of Gainesville Buholtz. And he's in that, uh, let's see, his height and weight, 6'3", 250. Could he grow into a, an interior defensive lineman? Is he going to be more of a strong side end? Could he even be an edge guy if he doesn't put on yeah. anymore? So we don't know. So – you know, they've got two commitments in this group, Corey, and only one of them, Nasir Johnson, is a sure 100% we know he's a defensive lineman. So they they now go from having a lot of hay in the barn to 
you know, you're going to try to get Burrow back on board, but once a guy decommits, that can be awfully difficult. We know the challenges or the percentages are, let's not mince words here. They're not in Florida's favor, right? <laughs> and, and then you've got uh, some other guys, and we'll get into them in a minute. But, Corey, this is now – it's an, it, I don't – I guess urgent is a good word because you cannot have a bad recruiting cycle on the defensive line, even as good as Florida's defensive line class was the previous cycle. So now it becomes there, there's a sense of urgency uh, to, to finish strong here. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And I think, too, when you look at this class, Keith, like Nasir Johnson, he's a four star guy, you know, has all the measurables. He, but the thing is with him, he's fairly raw. I think there's a long way to go there as far as his, the technical side of this game. And, you know, Kendall Jackson, you know, he's getting recruited to play the jack position for those people. That's the edge position in Florida's defense. So he does have a frame that could add weight. He could become more of a strong side end over time. But like you said, I feel like there's some uncertainty with this class. It's kind of a high upside class, but also guys that can project to different positions. And same thing with Amiris Williams. I love his film. He's one of my favorite players in the class, but he's another one where it's kind of, you know, he could play the edge position, what Ford is telling him. But yeah, the same exactly. time, he's, he's, he's ranked as a D lineman. So it's that's very right. You're saying, I mean, he's even saying he's playing edge. So, yeah. and, and that makes sense, Corey, because he's probably smaller than Kendall Jackson. Actually, they're probably about yeah. the same size. They're about the same size. Yeah. I think okay. Kendall's, Kendall's a little bit probably – I think Kendall has that frame that could probably expand a little bit better. But like you said, same type of frame and measurables like that for the So, head. Corey, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being um, the, a high level of significance losing this this commit mm -hmm. and 1 being, yeah, who cares? I, I put it up in the 7, 8 range. You know, is he a great player? No. Does he have a high upside? Well, not yet. Does he have Makai Burrow we're talking about? Does he have a high upside? I think so. What would his full impact be, even if he's a great college player? Well, he's still a two-down guy. So seven, yeah. eight range. And it, the reason it's that high, because, again, now looking what you have committed on the defensive line, you don't have much. Yeah. And so now you have some needs. That's going to be where a lot of the attention is now focused with this staff. Look, all the, you, you can recruit multiple positions at once. I'm not suggesting that all the attention is going to go to this. But it's going to be a priority for Coach Chaos, Sean Spencer, the defensive line coach, for Billy Napier for people behind the scenes, Jacob LaFrance. It is now going to be a high priority. Now, evaluations are ongoing. That's that's one thing I really like about this staff, and I, I, all staffs probably do it to a certain extent, but I like that they never really stop evaluating. They're yeah. always looking for guys. So uh, trust me, I, they're going to be prepared. That doesn't mean you're going to find a replacement as good or better if you can't get Barreau back, but they're prepared. They're prepared, and that's the first step. So who are some of the guys you need to know about? Well, one of them is L.J. McRae, and I don't think there's any question now that his importance, if he wasn't already Florida's number one overall remaining target, you could argue maybe Jordan Seaton, the offensive tackle from IMG Academy in Brainton, but it's L.J. McRae, Corey, because now, yeah. you only, again, one true defensive lineman came into the class. He's an absolute freak of nature, 6'6", 265, 270 pounds. I saw him play about three weeks ago. And he makes an impact on almost every single snap. Yeah. Uh, I, I watched his game film the other night. I should say he plays at Daytona Beach Mainland. Uh, Corey, he had a blocked field goal the other night. <laughs> and just on his on his film that I saw, a blocked field goal at six foot six, right up the middle. Uh, a couple sacks, tackles for loss, good COD. You know what college coaches love with the D lineman? COD, change of direction. So really? as tall as he is, he can go this way, and he can turn around and go that way. So – he has tackles, Corey, that are six, seven yards down the field, and you're like, well, that was still a seven-yard gain. I was going to say, he too, made, he made the play, but he yeah, made when, the play. I, when I saw his yeah. spring game, his motor from backside pursuit, you know, going to tackle the quarterback, and and like you said, too, there'd be times it'd be kind of reverse, and he would have to change direction at his size, and he would be able to change direction, and he would keep it would be very fluid, too, and he would be able to accelerate downhill to kind of redirect. And that's the difference, I believe, you know, between a top 50, top 100 guy and then guys in the back end of the on 300. Guys that size that can, you know, change direction like that, you know, that's why they're in that elite All-American category. And, and you see a lot of kids too, Keith. You see 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and you see the kid, he might be 6'4", maybe 6'5", at cleats, but when you see LJ McCray, he's everything you see as far as getting off the bus. You see his measurables. He's everything that's listed. So I think with Florida, I mean, he becomes that much more important going forward. And I know that Keith, you said initially, how would I rate that? I probably put it at a seven right now as far as uh, uh, Burroughs' decommitment. But I think that can go down more. If they get a guy like McCray or they get another defensive line commit, yeah. I think it maybe goes in the five, six range. That's kind yeah, of I, I, I asked you to rank it. Then I ranked it and then skipped right over you. So no, I'm no, sorry you're about fine. that. <laughs> it's a me world. What can I tell you? So listen, so LJ McCray, I mean, what I like about 
about him. I mean, he plays a little high. You know, his pad level is mm-hmm. a little high. They'll work on that wherever he goes. Offensive tackle, too. I mean, probably your first round offensive uh, af- offensive tackle draft pick. But even as tall and wide as he is, and, and he's not super wide. He's he's more like this. Uh, but he can get skinny in space. He fights through traffic, so he's aggressive. He's got the motor. He's got the long reach. He disrupts the quarterback, even if he doesn't get to him. And he gets to him a lot. He can block field goals. I mean, the guy is a special talent. He looks like one of those guys that we're going to be looking at in three years and saying he's going to be a first-round pick. He looks like he is that guy. All right, next up, Corey. And actually, we should point out with LJ McCray, we should get into his recruitment. We're just going to go for a couple more minutes. Uh, he's going to be at the Florida-Tennessee game this weekend. He'll officially visit Florida State on October 7th. His birthday is October 18th, and he wants to have a commitment right around that time, probably a little bit after. So this may be Florida's last chance to get him on campus. Florida likes its chances. FSU thinks it's in it. Miami thinks it's in it. Georgia is very optimistic, I was told this morning. But the one common denominator, all those schools see Florida as a big threat, if not the biggest threat. So Florida is the school that keeps coming up. They got a real shot. But let, let's go on to the next guy, Corey. Dalen Evans, uh, he's a Texas A&M commit from Texas. He, he visited officially visited the Gators in June. He says he's going to come back to Florida. Uh, but in the meantime, we do hear that A&M does have a certain amount of confidence that they're going to keep him in the class. What can you tell us about Mr. Evans? Yeah, so I, I, so I spoke with him this morning to see if he'd come for the Tennessee game. Um, he won't be able to make it this weekend, but he does plan to attend a home game later in the season. And right now, I think I like where AM stands. I think, you know, we, we both heard he's actively recruiting for the Aggies. Um, that commitment's been in place for over a year. Um, nothing to do with Florida. He definitely has a very high interest in Florida, but I think it's going to have to take a very, very strong impression to kind of get him to switch. And I said the same thing over the summer. You know, he didn't flip even after his OV, and that's when – Florida was clicking on all cylinders when it came to all those commitments in June. So, you know, it's going to have to take a lot to get them on board. So um, right now, Florida's a school pushing the hardest to flip them. It's just about getting him back on campus. And right now he's looking at a few more dates later in the season, but he, he plans to get back to Gainesville. It's just about locating that perfect date that fits for both parties. Yeah. I don't know about you. I'm not overly optimistic with Dalen Evans. However, yeah. if he comes back to Florida, uh, for a game, yeah, maybe that changes the way we think about things. But Florida's still pushing, obviously. We're going to give you one more name, and then we're going to tell you uh, kind of sum things up. But before we get to that, if you like what we're doing at Gators Online, uh, like our YouTube page, so, or like this video, excuse me, subscribe to the YouTube page, and, and also please leave a comment, good or bad. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, Corey's not the best-looking guy in the world. Let him know that he needs to to, to – Tighten up a little bit. I mean, you know what I mean? Obviously, you're not going to have any complaints about me. All right. Next guy. Next guy, Corey. This is an interesting one. Steve. Good luck. Um, Steve Bamua. I'm um, Bamua or Bamua. I can't pronounce his last name, but he's a four star edge slash defensive lineman from Canada. Okay. Now, I think he's originally from somewhere in Africa. Uh, fantastic kid. He Cameroon. visited. Yeah, Cameroon, maybe. He visited Florida this July, met him. Amazing young guy, uh, interesting young guy, but he's playing up in the great white north of Canada. Uh, but he did visit Florida. He got an offer from Florida. He got an offer from Georgia. He got an offer from Alabama. I think Auburn offered as well. And it's a lot of it's on potential. But when you look at him, he looks like a million dollars. I mean, I stood right next to him. The guy looks like uh, Javon Curse, okay? Uh, listed at, I think, uh, 6'3", 250, 260 in that range. But he probably is going to grow into a uh, – he's, he's rated as an edge – He's probably going to grow into a defensive lineman, maybe a little bit of an undersized type defensive lineman. But at different schools, he worked out at edge. And at some schools, he worked out on the interior. And supposedly, he was much better on the interior. He, his skill set is built for the interior, even if his body may be slightly undersized. But yeah, he's a guy who wants to visit Florida. The, we don't know when. He plays on Saturdays. There's so many unknowns with his recruitment. He says he communicates with Florida. Uh, we've talked to a third party that knows him pretty well, and, th- and they say that he absolutely wants to visit Florida. He just doesn't know when. He wants to visit Bama, wants to visit Tennessee. It's a name to track. Again, his team plays on Saturday, so he has limited windows in the fall. But obviously one more name to track, Corey. And then I, and then yeah. to wrap it up, um, the net's probably going to have to get cast a little wider. Now it's time to yeah. uh, circle back on other guy, on some guys. Uh, keep evaluating the guys you're already evaluating. Uh, go look, maybe, maybe some guys you're like, you know, guys at NC State or committed to NC State, Illinois, and Arizona. They have guys in the NFL too. And they're and, usually and, those guys. They actually they go after those high upside big bodies. That yeah, Florida typically goes after in the trenches. They're known for going after those high upside guys. 
But they, they have to, you know, they just had a, a terrific defensive line class the last cycle. But what you don't want to come back with is one that is subpar. So now they got the work cut out, Corey. Um, you know, obviously, Sean Spencer, he got it done last cycle. He's going to have to do it again this cycle. Would you agree with that? He's got his work cut out. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, and I think, too, with Sean Spencer, he's a great evaluator as well. He's very big on that. And you look at Cam James from last cycle, I think Florida was his first power five offer. I think since he was the only offer at the time and the kid ended up playing in the All-American Bowl. So I know with like with most coaches, I think Florida's in good hands with Spencer just because he's so in detail when it comes to yeah. evaluating. So like you said at the beginning of the show, Keith, Florida's kind of been prepared for this of a guy. We all kind of say you get a good class in the summer, but you have to keep these guys. So Florida has guys are still evaluating, like Keith said at the top of the show. And I think right now, like, you know, it's LJ McCray. You know, that's the number one guy on the board. I mean, Dalen Evans, we touched on. It's going to be hard to flip him. And I just keep looking at that Florida State date, you know, that OV for uh, for LJ McCray. I think that's going to be the X factor. So Sean Spencer definitely has his work cut out for him, but I think he's the right guy to kind of have this task. I think Florida yeah. fans should be excited. And to me right now, it's LJ McCray or bust. And even if you, if yeah. you don't land LJ McCray, maybe go out and grab somebody else. And then the portal becomes portal. very important to you because LJ McCray, I think is a guy that can contribute fairly early. Even if you land McCray, I think you still go in the, I mean, I, the portal's the way to go right now. You know, well, you, look right now they have two Caleb banks and they, I mean, yeah. they Cam Jackson, two guys cool. that are starting immediately. Well, look, uh, they're playing Tennessee this weekend. Their de yeah. defensive line coach in Knoxville is a guy named Rodney Garner, who I just happened to go back many years with. Yeah. He's an he's an eight guy, eight nine, ten guy rotation guy. That's that you you want in in a year or two when Kelby Collins is this all SEC freak. You want him fresh in the fourth quarter, all yeah. right? And that's how you achieve that. But anyway, that is uh, this edition of Rapid Reaction. The Gators lose a commitment, but all is not lost. We hope you enjoyed the show. I'm Keith Niebuhr. That's Corey Bender. Make sure you, you find us both on Twitter. But more importantly, go to GatorsOnline.com. We've got a great special. It's Florida, Tennessee week. Everybody's hyped. Corey's got Florida Field 2023 behind him. I got Florida Field 1975 behind me. It's a huge I was going to say, you're, you're a little you're a little. Oh, yeah, man. Old school. It's a huge week. Awesome. But Gators Online right now, we're going to get you in. We're going to hook you. We're going to keep you in one month for $1. Get your, get your foot in the door. Get your foot in the door, okay? One dollar, one month. Again, GatorsOnline.com. Like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and uh, leave a comment. We got more great content coming this week. Might throw in a recruiting live show. Uh, Larry Kennedy, Florida Gators uh, defensive back, great, who had a memorable Florida Tennessee game in 1991. One of the loudest moments in. I'm trying to point Florida field history produced by him and some other great shows this week. We appreciate you stopping by Corey. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody.